How do you know what you know and who told you so? The Cultural Basis of Religion and Knowledge. Part 1, Culture Defined. We typically don't realize it, but most of the facts we take for granted in our lives we did not figure out for ourselves. Someone else or society in general told us and we accepted them as the way it is. In other words, we got it through our culture. This is useful because it allows us to learn more quickly. Without this principle, we would have to learn everything, every generation, as if for the first time. We would have no advancement in technology, the arts, or anything else. So, so let's begin with the definition of culture. Because we learn culture by experiencing it one piece at a time, let's look at our definition the same way. Culture is a set of shared assumptions drawn from common experience and passed from generation to generation by means of acceptable behavior. Assumptions are ideas we hold without requiring proof and often without even saying them to others. Experience tells us what works and doesn't work, what is acceptable and what isn't, by directing and approving our behavior, one generation passes culture on to the next without even saying it. If you don't know the culture you are in, you may find yourself in hot water. It is important, therefore, to understand how culture works. Remember, culture is accepted without proof because those around us accept it, and we often learn it before we are old enough to ask questions about it. We accept that someone else tested it in the past and that their conclusions are correct. Let's take, for instance, the direction you button your shirt. Men button their shirts and coats with the buttonhole on the left. Women typically button their tops with buttonholes on the right. Now, man, you're going to have to take my word for this. It would be easier for a right-handed person to button the buttonholes if the buttons were on the right, allowing them to place their right thumb on top of the button and index and middle fingers around and below the threads to manipulate them but through practice you have learned to do it better from the left. Why? Because once long ago men learned that if they got their sword hilt on their coat flap while drawing it, that split second could cost them their lives. So how we button our shirts is accepted without question because others drew conclusions and swords in the past. Now new members usually get culture from older members without even discussing it. So how do you receive an idea without even discussing it? Think back to your school days. In the United States, the teacher might say as she writes on the board, Children, what is 2 plus 2? As many as think they know the answer begin to wave their hands and be, to be called on. Suppose the teacher selects a student and the student says 5. What happens? Snickers roll through the class and students continue to wave their hands until the teacher selects someone who says four. All the hands go down. That's right, she replies, and she writes the answer on the board. Or perhaps she lets the student who had the right answer write the answer on the board. Now suppose we visit a classroom in Japan. This time the teacher says, students, write this on your paper. Two plus two. The teacher pauses to give each student time to write it perfectly, each one comparing their copy not only to what the teacher wrote, but how the teacher wrote it. The teacher says, now everyone write the answer on your paper. After everyone has had time to write his or her answer on the paper, the teacher writes the correct answer on the board. The answer is four. Students check to be sure their answer looks the same as the teacher's answer. Then all the children look around at each other and smile. No one knows who got the answer and who missed it. In the United States, the students were taught 2 plus 2 equals 4, and it is important to be first. In Japan, the students were taught 2 plus 2 equals 4, and it is important to be like everyone else. The United States was founded by people who were seeking to do things their way, and the land was first come, first serve. Japan, by contrast, has been occupied by the same people for thousands of years, and cooperation is essential. There are two key phrases in our definition that make this culture and not just knowledge. First, the shared assumptions are accepted without question. That implies that people seldom consider for themselves whether they choose to believe them. Second, they are taught without discussion, meaning people don't even know they are being taught. 
This makes cultural ideas more powerful, because how can you reject an idea that you didn't know you learned? Let's discuss a few common statements and consider whether we know them as fact or assumptions. How about the Earth is round? You've been told this, but how do you know? You know it from satellite photographs, astronaut reports, and circumnavigation of the globe. But long before these, mathematics, solar eclipses, and other observations gave it away. Consider, if you will, this statue. It is a male Shishi lion. And this particular one poses for us in the forbidden city of Beijing, China. The lion symbolizes power by holding the earth under its right front paw. Note the shape of the earth. Shishi lions in this pose date back to the Han Dynasty, between 200 BC and 220 AD. But by this time on the other side of the earth, the Greek mathematician Eratosthenes had already put numbers to the size of this ball. He assumed that the sun was so far away that its rays must be everywhere essentially parallel. He noted the different angles of shadows at two distinct locations at the same hour. Paced off the distance between, and using trigonometry calculated the circumference of the Earth within 10% of what we know it to be today. And why not? Hundreds of years before that, the prophet Isaiah wrote, God is the one who sits above the circle of the Earth. And thousands of years before that, Job said, God stretched out the North above the empty places and hung the Earth upon nothing. Not only is it a fact that the Earth is round, it is a fact that no civilization in history has been documented to disagree. Let's take another example. The traffic laws this afternoon are the same as this morning. That the laws are the same from minute to minute depend on everyone agreeing to what they should be. We assume that everyone still agrees. Some assumptions are necessary or we couldn't survive together. Gravity draws objects towards the center of the Earth. This is not a human law, but a law of physics. We've tested it with many experiments and we know it to be a fact. We live in the best country in the world. I hope you each believe that about your country, but it is a matter of opinion, and people of many countries may think the same about their own. Your chair will hold you up. You probably didn't test it when you came in today, but that's because you've tested it or other chairs similar to it with consistent results in the past. This particular chair you may have initially assumed would hold you up, but now you know it for a fact, it will. Ideas can easily move from assumption to fact by testing, but we can also mistakenly move them to our category of fact simply by familiarity. Life today evolved over millions of years from one single life form. It is a fact that fossils contain evidence not only of living organisms, but also organisms that do not currently exist. It is a fact that a great variety of plants, animals, and microbes fill the earth today. But how they got here is not scientifically verifiable. Science can only test how things work by experiments repeated under controlled conditions. Anything about past one-time events is only inferred based on facts combined with assumptions. The statement may or may not be true, but it can only be inferred from a certain narrow set of assumptions. It is not a fact in and of itself. Remember where your assumptions come from. One person passes them to another. The assumptions of one become the assumptions of another. This takes place by going through the layers of culture, and it is most often never verbalized.